can control anybody. When you know what someone wants, you give it to them or you take it away. Believe it or not, there's a method to becoming a savage in the game. Zeke told me you want a permission to take me out. Who's Diana? Well, we're off to a rock and start on Power Book 2. I don't know why they called it Ghost. Maybe they should have called it Tariq. Any event, considering what Tasha said last night, it is pretty much inevitable that we are going to see Thomas Patrick Egan in this series at some point in time because she has implicated that man in a felony as he's trying to drive that sweet Mustang to California. In this video, this is my first trailer review and breakdown for the show, episode two. Let's take a look. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Folks, please turn on those notifications. It seems like every month YouTube turns them off so that when I do videos, when I go live, like I'll be going live tonight with Larry and Sharonda Paraway, you get the videos. Also, follow me on Instagram. For those of you wanting to see the baby, I tend to put most of the baby pictures on the gram. And if you're not investing, ladies and gentlemen, now is the greatest time in your life to make a lot of money just investing in stocks or trading options. Download the Robinhood app. You'll get a free stock courtesy of Lamont Tyson. Link is in the description. Let's watch a little bit more of the trailer. I can't do the full thing because they be trying to demonetize. But let's watch a little bit more of it and we'll pick apart the whole entire trailer. There's no such thing as a safe space for a kid like Tariq. I know you don't want me to say what I actually know to be true. I think that paper due the day after tomorrow. Whatever you got going on, I can help. I'm not lying. It's not the truth that matters. Very first scene, we see Queen Monet <clears throat> basically talking about you put the same discipline down for adults that you put down for kids by saying that if you know what somebody like, you give it to them or you take it away. That's the same kind of discipline you put down for children that you can use for adults. It doesn't change, ladies and gentlemen. And she is talking about Tariq. So whereas we think Tariq is vetting them like Ghost used to do, smart, intelligent, she's also vetting him. You see they flash by Tasha who is trying to figure out what the hell is she going to do up in jail to get through what they're trying to put on her now, which is a kingpin statue. I would love to see how she gets out of that. You see some random dude in Mary J. Blige's face. And then after that, you see the random dude gets punched in the face by Kane, who they are. It seems as though Kane is going to be like the new Kanan. You get it? Kane, Kanan. Because homeboy is just erratic. He's hard. He's doing all the things 50 Cent's character used to do right now. And as he punches homeboy to the floor, the mother, Monet, is just standing there looking at him like, you know what, N-word, that's what you get. So this is going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen. We see Tariq, it looks like he's at the airport. I'm not quite sure he's either at the airport or he's outside somewhere. And the very next clip, they cut to Diana. It looks like she's coming through something, um, possibly an airport or somewhere where they do. You have to go through the metal detectors, staring at Reek. In the very next scene, they cut to Reek in her face with her basically saying, you want to take me out, somebody else, I turned them down. And then they cut right back to Lauren, who likes Reek. And then they cut right back to Reek about to kiss Diana. Then they cut back to Reek about to kiss Lauren. So ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't know it, but he's becoming ghosts. Not James St. Patrick, but ghosts. He's got two women in a triangle, which is probably going to eventually lead to a fight. You know that's coming. And one of these girls is about the education and the other one is about street life. So let's just see how that plays out. And for those of you that are really, 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 really following the small details, you got a light-skinned sister and you got a dark-skinned sister. And some folks is probably complaining about that. Next clip, they cut to Mary J. Blige just basically schooling her daughter Diana on anytime Tariq does anything. They either wind up dead or in jail. You see Reek going to the laundromat, which um, I know college kids tend to do their laundry in a laundromat. But ladies and gentlemen, you know Reek loves to hide things in certain places. This could be a place where he's hiding some of his drugs. 
You see, they cut to a scene with him about to walk into the municipal building. And then they show Tasha on the phone with Reed, telling him he needs to have a gun. He needs to be strapped. Um, I think that one's plain and simple. You see Reek running, talking to his mom. Um, Reek's got to be strapped just because, you know, he's into the game now. And he's probably finally told the mom he's into the game, not via the phone because he ain't that stupid, but has highlighted the way they did in this last episode through their own kind of language about getting in the game. If y'all remember that phone call when he asked his mother about the girl from the daycare, that let her know that he's about to start slanging again, and she knows he's doing it now, and so she's basically wanting him to get a gun. We see Kane and somebody else that's associated with the family running through the streets. What the hell did they just do? They probably just robbed a liquor store or something. Who knows? And then we see Tasha St. Patrick Green in a studio, it looks like, getting her makeup done. She then came out of the orange jumpsuit. And as she's sitting in that mirror, we see some another hottie from, it looks like, the DNC just telling her this is the best deal on the table. And after she does whatever she do, whoever interview she's doing, she's right back in the straight jacket. And I think this is before that interview, but Tasha has already shown you can put that lace front wig and snatch it back quick. It don't even have to be in, se in sequence. Davis McClain sitting there looking at Reed who throws down the cash on the table as Tasha's telling Tariq, you got to pay this man whatever you need to pay him. And then, ladies and gentlemen, who is this with a gun? Somebody in the comment section said that that's Tommy. I said, nah, the gun is too small for Tommy and the hand is definitely too small. That's a female. It's just a matter of whose female hand is that with the gun on, I think. Could be a small man's hand, but it looks like a female. Then we cut to Professor Killjoy just basically talking about when you've got a kid like Tariq, it's going to be hard to adapt and help this young man do what he needs to do. And then they showed the one teacher, the one professor that had Tariq's back, Miss Megram. And the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, you know that her and Professor Killjoy are going to get involved in something because they've got a little love interest in between them and they're at some vigil. Do you actually think this vigil is for James St. Patrick. It would be hard for me to believe they're having a vigil for him at this point. This could be for some crime on campus. Um, somebody got hurt on campus and they're having a vigil because you see these kids out here, but you also see the professor looks like she's at the vigil too. And I don't see either one of them doing anything uh, for James St. Patrick, especially on campus. And the kids looking all sad. I guess we'll see in this coming episode. Then we see photographers, it looks like the press, in a graveyard. And they cut to, and we're assuming that that is James St. Patrick being put to, put to the ground. Now, is Tommy going to show up for this? Tommy is coming back this season. It's too late. Tasha done implicated him in a massive crime. He's going to come back. Now, Tommy ain't averse to coming back, hiding behind the bushes, looking in on stuff. Y'all remember he done that in last year's power. And this is obviously supposed to be for James St. Patrick. Will we see Tommy pop up somewhere around this funeral looking in because he didn't heard the word that Tasha snitched on him. It's supposed to have been his girl. Then we see them cut to my man Tate. And ladies and gentlemen, I am still looking forward to Tate's spinoff because what they're doing with the legal stuff with Tasha and the, the criminal stuff and the political stuff in this show are two of the anchors that make this show really, really good, along with all the other eight dynamics they have stuck in here dealing with Reek. Those three parts make it really good. And we see them, the, we see Steve from the DNC and we see John Mott basically grilling Tate, probably about ghosts, James St. Patrick. And Tate is basically like, you want me to tell you the real truth? And then we see Tariq doing some work and we see Ezekiel slam a book down on the table saying, you know, bro, you're going to have to get this done for me. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not going to be sustainable for Tariq. That's another situation that's about to blow up. Then we see Kane and homeboy that was running through the street. I think that the reason they was running probably takes place from whatever they're doing right here. He's about to punch somebody in the face and do something grimy. This is definitely the Kane from... Powers 
show in this show. And then we see Tariq looking down from the library on his empire, as I'm sure he's contemplating how he's going to get his drug cartel network going in college. And then they cut to a frame of him and Braden. And what you know, basically, this is going to be Tommy and Ghost, Braden and Tariq. But Braden is going to have to grow up a little bit. Braden is trying to be a college kid, which is, hey, that's what he's supposed to do right now. You party, you screw girls, you go to um, all these different things involving college. And then we cut to Cooper Sacks. As Braden was just basically telling Tariq, man, what the hell are you involved with? You need to get out of it. And we know Cooper Sacks is a pure fuck up. And he's going to mess up again, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a matter of what is going to happen with him in a mess up. And will we get the backstory of why they call him this man Nancy? Me and my wife was like, my wife was like, hmm, did he start out a woman? Then he transitioned to a man? I don't think that's the case. I just think that because he fucked up so bad, they were trying to humiliate him by calling him a woman. But maybe we'll see. And then they transition to someone who's dealing with money. And I don't know if that's going to be someone on Tariq's team or is that someone Monet already got in the bag. Considering they put this clip right after he talked to Braden, maybe that's a connect with Braden. And then we see Tariq going into a building. And we know Tariq loves to sneak into places. You know, he was sneaking into Tommy's warehouse last season. And then we see on the tail end of this trailer, Tasha yelling at Davis McClain and Davis McClain explaining to her that the truth is not always what it seems and you need to get me a good story so I can get your ass up out of this jail. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the review of episode two trailer that come, the episode comes out Sunday. So far, I'm loving the show. I didn't even really think twice about Ghost where a lot of you guys are feeling like as soon as Tasha gets out of jail and as soon as they let you know whether or not there's ghosts in the casket and they put him in the ground, some of y'all are saying y'all going to jet. I don't think so because so far the writing seems to be very well. And what do we expect with Courtney Kemp other than a few snafus? And the storylines they have put in place for Tariq and some of the other characters seems to be really, really good and enough to keep me intrigued. You guys leave me all your comments on what you think is going to happen in this episode and what did I miss in the trailer review. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. Again, follow me on Instagram. Go over there and check out the baby. Be sure to join me and Larry and Sharonda live tonight, 9 p.m. And turn on the notifications so every time we go live, we go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night, you guys can get in on the conversation. And also start investing in your future by downloading this Robinhood app and start getting stocks. And when you download the app, you will get a free stock. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.